standing in front of my pear tree here and it's full of a disease called fire blight, which is a bacteria. Now where did that come from? Well, some plant either in my orchard or somebody else's yard had this bacteria and it is transmitted by pollinators like bees or other insects. It's very easy to uh, spread. And this particular disease can reduce the crops because it kills branches or if it gets into the main trunk it can kill the tree completely. Now not all plants are equally susceptible to fire blight but apples and pears are. Most pear varieties are very susceptible and except for maybe seco. Seco is a little less susceptible. Most apples are also but to di different degrees you might say. For instance Mutsu and Fuji and Gala and Ida Red which I have quite a few Ida Reds in my orchard. Paula Red, Jonathan and plants on the rootstocks of Mark, M9, and M26 are very susceptible to this problem. A critical infection time in your orchard is during bloom, especially if the weather is warm and wet. And when I mean warm, we're talking about 70s to 80 degrees. And when the blooms become infected, they can ooze a bacterial goo, if you will, and we call this inoculum, and it can be spread throughout the trees as flies and bees and various other insects come in and get this bacterial ooze on their bodies and then they transmit it to different parts of the plant. And bacteria are small, so small they can enter through pruning wounds, they can enter through lenticels or stomata which are pores on the leaves and so it's, it's very easy for the bacteria to infect the plant. Now you could also spread this disease by pruning. And let's say for instance you didn't notice that you had a uh, infection of fire blight, you didn't know what it was, you thought it was just a dead branch and you pruned it out, if you cut through the section where the bacteria are, your pruning shears are now infected and as you go and make cuts on healthy tissue, you can spread that bacteria all over the tree. Now most people don't notice the infection until the shoots start to die. And this is several weeks after petal fall. And what happens is the leaves start to turn brown, then the shoots turn brown, and it progressively moves up the branch. And as it moves up the branch, you may notice what's called a shepherd's crook um, on the branch itself, where it's shaped sort of like this, where at the tip of the branch it dies and kind of hangs over. And as an infection gets into the older woods, the wood starts to sink in and develops cankers, and the tree overall looks like it's scorched. And it's pretty easy to determine if you have fire blight because of the difference in the color of the wood and also those sunken, shriveled areas. Now, the question is, what can I do about it? Well, once it's there, all you can do is prune it out, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But in the spring, what you should try to do is prevent the infection. And there are a number of products that can be used. One, especially if you're interested in organic controls, is copper materials. And as I've mentioned before in other videos, not all copper materials are okay to use uh, in organic plantings. You have to have that OMRI label uh, to determine whether or not it's acceptable to use. But when you're using copper products, it should be used before the growth stage up to about what we call green tip. That's where the leaf buds are starting to show some green color. If you go beyond that, you may cause some toxicity on the plants, in other words, damage. Now, traditionally, what we use against bacteria are antibiotics, antibiotics. And the most common one available is called streptomycin. And that is probably the ones that most homeowners can get their hands on and are most cost effective in terms of price. There's also another one called Ketsumin and also Oxytetracycline. These are two materials. Now if you happen to you be in an area where there's an orchard that has developed, uh, or I should say the bacteria has developed resistance to streptomycin, the latter two that I mentioned would be your uh, choice. They may be a little bit more difficult to find, but uh, that's your option. Now, when you put on this material, the antibiotics, you will get forward control for about two to four days. That means it's protective for almost four days, depending on the weather. If you get a good uh, rain, like an inch or more, uh, you're going to have to reapply it. Also, uh, once you um, put it on after a rain, you can eliminate the bacteria if they are no longer than 24 hours old in terms of being on there. Now, blossoms can spread an awful lot of bacteria and in one or two days, the bacteria as they reproduce can produce a million bacteria. So you can tell it's very easy to move that through the orchard very quickly. 
Now, when you're going to use uh, the antibiotics like streptomycin, uh, normally the package will tell you 24 ounces per acre, but most people do not have an acre of apple trees. So basically, I broke that down to grams. So that's about two grams per gallon of water. And also, you should add to that a non-ionic surfactant. And what this does is allows the water to spread more evenly over the flowers, thus having uh, more effectiveness. And the amount of the ionic, uh, non-ionic surfactant that you should put on is about two and a half teaspoons per gallon. So we're talking about fairly small amounts here. Now, if you have to make more than one application, for instance, if you sprayed today and it rained um, tomorrow, and it rained, say, two inches, then you'd have to apply it again. But when you do, do not put the, the surfactant in it. Otherwise, you can cause some leaf yellow. Now, in terms of organic options, once you have the uh, material there or the disease there, all you can do is prune it out. And that's the same thing for conventional uh, ways of dealing with the two once it's there. And it's fairly easy to see, as I've shown you here on the video, but uh, one of the things that you can do is uh, cut back 8 to 12 inches beyond where you see obvious physical symptoms. And the other thing you should do is dip your pruning shears in a 10% bleach, 90% water solution so that just in case you didn't cut back far enough, you won't be spreading fire blight to other areas of the tree. Now, Another thing that you can do for organic options in the beginning is try to select varieties that are less susceptible to the problem to begin with and also try to select rootstocks that are less susceptible to fire blight. There's also a yeast product that you might want to try. It's called Blossom Protect. And also there's Serenade Max, which is a bacteria. I've mentioned Serenade in some of my other bulletins. And there's another bacillus material called Double Nickel. And a copper product that you may want to try is called Cueva, spelled C-U-E-V-A. So those are all uh, chemical products that you can use in organic culture. Now again, once you have the strikes there, chemical products will not work. All you can do is prune out the material and cut below the infection area. And then once you've done that, either double bag it and send it to uh, the landfill or your other option is to get a little lighter fluid, douse uh, the pile of your wood, and set those on fire and burn them up. And otherwise, you can still spread the bacteria if you have a pile of infected branches laying around. So hopefully you won't end up with too much trouble with fire blight, but if you do get it, you need to get to it quickly, otherwise it can destroy your trees. This is Gary Heilig, and I'll see you in my next video. And if you like this video, please subscribe.